Dr. Bryant. Do you think it's wise to pursue the metaphysical nature of Blake's poetry? Dr. Bryant? Hmm? I was asking you, Doctor, if you think that in approaching Blake, we should pursue the metaphysical aspect of his poetry. Most definitely. Blake, they all get so worked up about him. Blake, do you know what he is? He is a dead poet. That's all. I'm sorry, Dr. Bryant, but I can't agree with that. To dismiss William Blake as a dead poet is facile. Facile. <laughs> I've studied Blake extremely closely over a number of years, and I absolutely disagree with your appraisal of his genius. Dr. Bryant, I don't think you're listening to me. Mr. Collins, I don't think you're saying anything to me. Doctor, are you drunk? Drunk. Of course I'm drunk. You don't really expect me to teach this when I'm sober. Well, then you won't mind if I leave your tutorial. Why should I mind? What do you want to be stuck in here for anyway? Because we want to study literature. Literature? Look, the sun is shining. You're all young. What are you doing in here? Why don't you all go out and do something? Why don't you all go out and make love or something? Julia. Darling, can I have the keys to the car? Yeah. Has your class finished? Ages ago. Don't forget Brian and Elaine for supper tonight. No, you do know I'm going to be late. No. But, darling, I told you, I've got a new student coming this evening. It's what time? Open University. Very late. The wire-grown adult should want to come to this place in the evening after putting in a hard day's labour is beyond me. Come in. Come in. For God's sake, come in. I'm coming in, aren't I? It's that stupid bleeding handle on the door. You want to get it fixed? Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I meant to. Well, that's no good, is it? Always meaning to. You want to get on with it because one of these days you'll be sharp and come in and it'll go on forever because the poor sod on the other side won't be able to get in and you won't be able to get out. And you are? I'm a what? Huh? What? And you are? What is your name? Me first name? Well, that would at least constitute some sort of start, wouldn't it? Rita. Rita. Uh, here we are. Rita. It says here, Mrs. S. White. Oh, yes, that's S for Susan. That's just my real name. But I'm not a Susan anymore. I've changed my name to Rita. Uh, you know, after Rita Mae Brown? No. Rita Mae Brown, who wrote Ruby Fruit Jungle. No. Haven't, haven't you read it? No. It's a fantastic book, you know. Do you want to lend it? Uh, yes. Hmm. Yes. Well, thank you very much. OK. And uh, what do they call you around here? Sir. But you may call me Frank. OK. Frank. That's a nice picture, isn't it, Frank? Uh, yes, I suppose it is. It's 
very erotic. Actually, I don't think I've looked at that picture in ten years, but, uh, yes, it is, I suppose so. Well, there's no suppose about it. Look at those tits. Do you mind me using words like that? Like what? Tits. Uh, no. No, you wouldn't. It's only the masses who don't understand. It's not their fault, but sometimes I hate them. I do to shock them sometimes. You know, like when I'm in the hairdressers where I work, I'll say something like, um, oh, I'm really fucked, dead loud, and it doesn't half cause a fuss. <laughs> yeah, but with educated people, they don't worry, do they? It's the aristocracy that swears more than anyone. It's all past me the fucking pheasant with them. <laughs> but you couldn't tell them that round, are we? Aren't you supposed to be interviewing me? Do I need to? Oh, I talk too much, don't I? Yeah, I don't know I talk a lot. I don't at home. But I don't often get the chance to talk to someone like you. Would you like to sit down? No, can I smoke? Tobacco. What? Yeah? Oh, was that a joke? Yes. <laughs> yeah, do you want one? Well, I'd, I'd like one. Yeah, go on. No, but I, I promise not to smoke. Well, I won't tell anyone. Promise. I hate smoking on my own. Everyone seems to have packed up these days. All afraid of getting cancer. Bloody cowards. Would you like a drink? What of? Whiskey. Oh, yeah. My mate's got a drinks cabinet like that. <laughs> Tell me, what made you suddenly decide to do this? It's not sudden. I've been realising for ages that I was, you know, slightly out of step. I'm 26. I should have had a baby by now. Everyone expects it. But, I mean, I don't want a baby yet. No. I want to discover myself first. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've, you know, I've, I've tried to explain it to my husband, you know. But between you and me, I think he's thick. Well, he doesn't want to see, you know. What's this like? Howard's End. Uh... Mm, Howard's End. Sounds filthy, doesn't it? <laughs> he, um, Foster. Foster. Oh, yeah. What's it like? Well, read it. Would you like to borrow it? Yeah, all right. I'll look after it for you. If I pack the course, then I'll post it back. Pack it in? You haven't even started yet. Why would you pack it in? Well, I just might. You know, I might think it was a soft idea. What does assonance mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Uh, no. Uh, assonance, it's a form of rhyme. Um, what's an example? Do you know Yeats? The Wine Lodge? No, W.B. Yeats, the poet. No. Well, in his poem, The Wild Swans at Cool, Yeats rhymes the word swan with the word stone. There you see. That's an example of assonance. Oh, mm, yeah. Means getting the rhyme wrong. <laughs> well, I've never actually thought of it like that, but I suppose you're right. It does mean getting the rhyme wrong. I love this room. I love the view from this window. Do you like it? I don't often consider it, actually. I sometimes get the urge to throw something through it. What? A student, usually. You're bleeding bad, you, aren't you? Probably. What are you looking at? Are you a good lady's hairdresser, Rita? Yeah, I am. But they expect too much, you know? Like, women who come to hairdressers, like, they come in, and half an hour later, they want to walk out a different person, you know. But, I mean, if you want to change, you've got to do it from the inside, haven't you? You know, like I'm trying to do. Do you think I'll be able to learn? Are you sure you're serious about wanting to learn? I'm dead serious. Yeah, uh, look, I know I take the piss on that, but that's only because I'm not, you know, well, you know, like, confident-like. But, I mean, I want to be honest. When, you know, when you'd actually start teaching me, like? What can I teach you? Everything. <laughs> you want a lot. And I can't give it. Between you and me and the walls, actually, I am an appalling teacher. That's all right, most of the time. Appalling teaching is quite in order for most of my appalling students. But it is not good enough for you, young woman. All I know is, and you must listen to this, all I know 
is that I know absolutely nothing. And besides, I don't like the hours of this open university business. They expect me to teach when the pubs are open. It's all right. There are other tutors, good ones. I will arrange one for you. Are you saying you want me to go? Goodbye, Rita. and they're going to bleed and well teach me. There are other teachers, I've told you. But you're my tutor. I don't want another tutor. For God's sake, woman, I've told you. But you're my tutor. But look, I, I've look. told you I do not want to do it. Why pick on me? Because you're a crazy mad piss artist who wants to throw his students through the window. I like you. Don't you recognise a compliment? And when I come next week, I'll bring me scissors, give you a haircut. You will not be coming here next week. Oh, I will be. And you'll be getting an haircut. I will not. Oh. I suppose you want to walk around looking like that, do you? Like what? Like a geriatric hippie. See you next week. <laughs> You're a student, aren't you? Yes. So am I. Brian, why don't you get Elena refill? And yourself, of course. Oh, well, Frank hasn't arrived yet. Lovely record, Julie. Yes, isn't it? I do hope Frank won't be too late. God, I forgot. I meant to phone my publisher. May I, Julia? Of course. Shan't be a minute, dear. All right, darling. Lovely. Good. Yes, yes, I know that, Morgan. I... I don't think you've even read the contract. Morgan, you don't seem to be listening to me. You realise that I'll probably have to go to Jones about this? Hello, darling. Hello. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Frank. You didn't go to the pub, then? No, I changed my mind. Good. I'll see you to the dinner. But, Morgan, you don't seem to understand how important this is. It is imperative that the book is published before the next academic year commences. Yes, yes, yes. All right. I'll phone tomorrow, yes. Why? Sorry about that, my publisher. Frank, I wanted to mention this before we die. And, uh, slightly embarrassing. But the uh, thing is, there's been a bit of a complaint. A complaint, Brian? Yes, well, apparently you were a little... drunk at your tutorial today. No. No? No, I was a lot drunk. Why do you do it when you've got, well, well, what haven't you got? A drink at the moment. Oh, Frank, the staff accepted you. Well, we all understand that you drink, but I don't think the sign should be displayed to the students. Do you know what assonance means? Of course. Yeah? Go on. Assonance. Yeah. Assonance is a rhyme. The identity of which depends merely on the vowel sounds. An assonance is merely a syllabic resemblance. Assonance means getting the rhyme wrong. <laughs> I want to look like that. OK, 
Okay. Was that a book you're reading? Yeah, yeah. What's it called? Oh, of human bondage. Yeah? My husband's got a lot of books like that. Well, some of it more books? No, bondage books. Oh. Just oil in the foyer. Oh, sorry, Frank. You can have that. Sit down. I love walking around this room. Rita, don't you ever just come into a room and sit down? I don't want to sit down. I love that lawn down there. All the proper students. What? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Now, uh, this essay you wrote for me. It was crap. No, no. The thing is, Rita, how the hell can you write an essay on E.M. Forster with almost total reference to Harold Robbins? Oh, well, well, you said to bring in other authors. Reference to other works will impress the examiners, you said. Yes, yes I said refer to other works, but I doubt if the examiner, God bless him, will have read um, Where Love Has Gone. Well, that is hard luck, isn't it? Yes, and it'll be your hard luck when he fails your paper. Because that's what he would do if you wrote like this during an exam. Oh, that's prime. Now, there's justice for you. I get failed because I'm more well-read than the friggin' examiner. Devouring pulp fiction is not being well-read. I thought reading was supposed to be good for one. It is, but you have to be selective. I, I mean, in your favour here, you you've mentioned sons and lovers, but, I mean, this is all over the place. Oh. It's very subjective and highly sentimental. Yeah, crap. No, th there are things that are worthy in it. But the main thing is, Rita, is if you're going to learn criticism, you have to begin to discipline that mind of yours. Are you married? What? Are you? What's your wife like? For God's sake, woman, is my wife at all relevant? Well, you should know. You married her. Then, in that case, she is not relevant. I haven't seen her in a long time. We split up, all right? I'm sorry. Well, why are you sorry? I'm sorry for asking, for yeah. being nosy. OK, fine. Now, the thing about how it's... Why did you split up? Why don't you take notes? Then, when you have to answer a question on Forster, you can treat the examiner to an essay called Frank's Marriage. Go away! I'm only interested. We split up, Rita, because of poetry. You what? One day, my wife explained to me that for the past 15 years, my output as a poet had dealt entirely with the part of our lives in which we discovered each other. Are you a poet? was. And so, to give me something new to write about, she left me. A very noble woman, my wife. She left me for the good of literature. And remarkably, it worked. Well, you wrote a lot of good stuff, did you? No, I stopped writing altogether. Are you taking the piss? No. Come on. People don't split up because of things like that, because of literature. Ah, you may be right. But that's how I remember it. Now, Let's get back to Howard's end. So, do you live on your own, then? Rita! I'm only asking. I live with a girl. Her name is Julia. She's a young tutor here. She's very caring, very tolerant. And she admires me enormously. And do you like her? Yes, I, I like her enormously. It's myself I'm not too fond of. Your Grace! Ah, a vote of confidence. Thank you. I'm afraid you'll find there is less to me than meets the eye. See? You can say dead clever things like that, can't you? I wish I could talk like that. It's brilliant. <laughs> Rita, why didn't you walk in here 20 years ago? I don't think they would have accepted me at the age of six. <laughs> now, come on, Forster. Oh, no, forget him. Now, listen to me. You asked me to teach you. You want to learn. Well, I'm afraid that's going to take a lot of work. You've barely had any schooling. You have never been in an examination in your life. Possessing a hungry mind is not in itself a guarantee of success. All right. I just don't like how it's bleeding in. Then go back to what you do like and stop wasting my time. Go out and buy yourself a new dress and I'll go to the pub. Is that you putting your foot down? It is, actually. Aren't you impressive when you're angry? <laughs> right.
is going on? I thought we could make these two rooms into one through lounge. Improve the house. There's only one way you could improve this house. By bombing it. It'll look great, this, when I've finished. Oh, once I've got the plaster up, you won't recognise it. Denny, come to the theatre with me. What? What for? Look, if we went to the theatre, we could see the play and it would help me do my essay. I've told you, Susan, I don't like you doing this, right? I just leave me out of it. Where are you going? Upstairs with P again. With who? It's a book, you brat. <laughs> I thought we were going down the beer keller tonight. What for? Do you know, they've got eight, eight different kinds of beer to choose from. Now, who'd have thought they'd have built paradise at the end of our street? Suggest ways in which one... Suggest ways in which one... You know what's wrong with you, don't you, Susan? Well? What is wrong with me? You need a baby. Oh, do I? How long is it since you stopped taking the pill? Susan? When was it you stopped taking the pill? I mean, that's nearly six months ago and you're still not pregnant. I think we'd better get you to a doctor. I can't be anything wrong with me. I, the fellas in our family only have to look as a woman and she's pregnant. Oh, must be because you're all cock-eyed. Uh -huh. Come on, get ready. I thought we were going to the beer keller. Thought you were doing your studying. How can I do me bleeding essay with you demolishing the house around my ears? All right, all right. I'll just finish this and I'll get changed. Go on, hit it! Hit it! You can't just bloody belt it, you know. Why not? It has to be taken down carefully. Ah, go away. Go on, hit it. OK. What would you know about it? It needs the small hammer. Still my girl, aren't you? Could be. You play your cards right. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Frank. Hello, George. Brian! I'm going to leave Elaine. Now, Brian, I don't think you should do anything. You must to leave Frank. Frank. No. No, he needs me. Needs you? My God, most of the time he can't even see you. That's not true. He does need me. He responds to me. Is that why he's always four parts pissed? Recently, he's hardly been drinking. I know it's taking me a long time. But finally, he's starting to respond to the sort of security I can offer him. Oh, Brian. Oh, but Julia. Leslie, you promised me an essay by tomorrow. Don't be so bloody crass, Morgan. Julia? Yes, yes, I know that, but... Have you got the text to Peer Gint? I think so. No, I'm not presenting you with an ultimatum, Morgan. I quite realise that you... What's it for? Designated... My Open University student. But you must oh, yes, understand. what's her name? Rita. That's right, Rita. Yeah. When are we yeah. going to meet this Rita you keep talking about? Oh, sometime, I suppose. Look, Morgan, our association now has lasted for some eight years. You must invite her to supper. Oh, uh, well... She uh, sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, thank you for the text. Uh, unless I hear from you by nine o'clock... Doesn't he possess a phone? Goodbye. Frank? Yeah? I think you ought to know that I, uh, intend to leave my... publisher. Yes, well, that would help with my phone bill considerably, Brian. Bye. Bye-bye, darling. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hello. Forster. Friggin' Forster. I'll tell you what Forster does. He gets on my tits. Show me the evidence. Dirty sort. <laughs> I just can't understand what he's on about. It's no good, Frank. When it comes to Forster, I have got a blank. I just can't understand him. You will, Rita. You will. Well, it's all right for you. I just can't figure it. Yes. Well, do you think we might forget about Forster for the moment? Yeah, with pleasure. I would like to talk about this that you sent me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yes, well, now, in reply to the question, suggest how you would resolve the staging difficulties inherent in a production of Ibsen's Peer Gint. You have written, quote, do it on the radio, unquote. Yeah. Well? Well, what? Well, I, I know it's probably quite naive of me, but I did think you might let me have a considered essay. Yeah, well, that's all I could do in the time. You were dead busy in the shop this week. You write your essays at work? Yes. Well, Denny doesn't like me doing this. He gets dead narked if I work at home, and I can't be bothered arguing with him. Rita, you can't go on producing work as thin as this. At least not if you want to pass an exam. I thought that was the right answer. I sort of encapsulated all my ideas into one line. Rita, it's the basis for an argument, but a single line is not an essay. You know that as well as I do. You've done what? An essay. In attempting to resolve the staging difficulties in the production of Ibsen's Peer Gint, I would present it on the radio because, as Ibsen himself says, he wrote it as a play for voices, never intending it to go on in a theatre. If they had had the radio in his day, that is where he would have done it. Denny, I 
I don't want to have a baby, not until I've discovered myself. This is getting to be a bit wearisome. Whenever you come here, Mrs. White, you'll do anything except start work immediately. Come on. Where's your essay? I haven't got it. You haven't done it? I said I haven't got it. Don't tell me. It's been stolen. Whilst you were sleeping, a group of Cambridge dons broke into your house and stole your essay on Jekyll. Rita? It's burned. What? So are all the Chekhov books you lent me. Danny found out I was on the pill. He's burnt all me books. Oh, Christ. I'm sorry. I'll get you some more books. Oh, sod the books. I wasn't referring to the books. Why can't he just let me get on with me learning? You think I was having an affair the way he behaves? You know, perhaps you are having an affair. Good Ray, I'm not. What time have I got for an affair? Jesus, I'm busy enough finding myself, let alone finding anyone else. I'm beginning to find me. It's great. It is, you know, Frank. It might sound selfish, but all I want for the time being is what I'm finding inside me. I certainly don't want to go rushing off with some fella. Perhaps your husband thinks you're having an affair with me. Oh, go away. You're my teacher. I told him that. You told him about me? Yeah. What? I've, I've tried to explain to him how you give me room to breathe. You, like, feed me without expecting anything in return. What did he say? He didn't. I mean, I said to him, you soft get, even if I was having an affair. There's no point in burning me books. I'm not having it off with Anton Chekhov. He said, oh, yeah, I wouldn't put it past you to shack up with a foreigner. What are you going to do, Rita? I told him I'd only have a baby when I've got choice, but he doesn't understand. Do you love him? I see him looking at me sometimes, and I know what he's thinking. I do, you know. He's wondering where the girl he married has gone to. He even brings me presents sometimes, you know, hoping that the presents will make her come back. She can't. She's gone. And I've taken her place. Good evening. Professor Bodkin continues his lectures on the narrative structure... Are of you coming to bed? In a minute. I'll be off in a minute. As you have already recognised, it's a play remarkably rich in texture, somewhat confusingly so in my case. The interior life of the characters is really self-evident. Therefore, the tragic hero will fall from grace because of this flaw in his character. There you have it. One is an outer accent.
Excuse me, my Frank, Frank, I'm sorry. I just had to tell somebody. What is it? What's wrong? Last night, Frank, I went to the theatre. My God, I thought it was something serious. It was. It was Shakespeare. Rita, I thought something had happened to you. Something did happen to me. It was fantastic. Look, Macbeth I was. I bought the book. Oh, it, it done my head in. I thought it was going to be dead boring, but it wasn't. It was electric. Wasn't his wife a cow? And that fantastic bit where he meets Macduff and he thinks he's all invincible. I was on the edge of my seat at that bit because I knew. I wanted to shout out and warn him and tell Macbeth. You didn't, did you? No. Oh, they just throw me out the theatre. <laughs> Macbeth's a tragedy, isn't it? Right. Right. Well, I, 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 I just wanted to tell someone who'd understand. Rita, I am honoured that you chose me. Well, I'm, I'm sorry I disturbed you. Rita, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're near the end. Why don't you just come in and sit for a minute? No, oh, no, Frank. Come, come no, on, wait. come on. You'll find it interesting. Come on. It's very interesting. Here you go. Come on. Don't worry about it. This is Mrs. White. She comes to me once a week for an open university course, and she'll be joining us for the rest of this tutorial. You sit there. Now, um, where were we? Ah, yes, tragedy. We must not confuse tragedy, uh, the real tragedy of drama, with the merely tragic. Now, let's take um, a tragic hero. Uh, Macbeth, for instance. We see that the uh, flaw in his character forces him to take the inevitable step towards his own doom. Whereas, what we read in the newspaper as being tragic, uh, man killed by falling tree, is not a tragedy. It is for the poor sod under the tree. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's tragic, yes, um, absolutely tragic. But it is not a tragedy in the way that Macbeth is a tragedy. Why? Well, because of the tree. I wish I could think like they do. It's quite easy, Rita. Oh, it is for you and them. I just thought it was a dead exciting story, Macbeth. You know, but you lot, you see all sorts of things in it, don't you? It's fun tragedy, isn't it? <laughs> all them, they know all about that sort of thing, don't they? Rita, what do you do on Saturdays? I work. Well, after you finish work. Well, I don't know. I want you to come over to the house. Why? Well, Julia's organised a few people to come round for dinner. What, you want me to come? Why? Why do you think? I don't know. Because you might enjoy yourself. Will you come? If you want. No. What do you want? Yeah, all right, I'll come. Will you bring Denny? Well, I don't know if he'll come. Well, ask him. All right. Christ, me customer! She's still under the dryer. She only wanted a demi-wave. She'll come out looking like a friggin' Muppet. I was at a house once where... They serve chocolate mints with their coffee. <laughs> My husband. Oh, he's an electrician, you know. It's a marvellous Chinese takeaway just at the end of our street, you know. <sighs> Have you seen Macbeth by William Shakespeare? Are you going to change your mind? No. What will you do? I'm going to the pub with your mum and dad. That's where you should be going. Oh, well, we're not good enough for you now, are we? Denny, he invited us both. Come on, change your mind. Come with me. You might actually like him. Oh, might I actually, Susan? Well, isn't that actually, actually nice? Well, sod you.
it. you could have come. I couldn't. Why? I'd brought the wrong sort of wine. For Christ's sake, I wanted you to come. You didn't have to dress up and bring wine. If you go out to dinner, don't you dress up? Don't you take wine? Yes, I, I do. But... Yeah, well? Well, what? Well, you wouldn't have taken sweet sparkling wine, would you? Does it matter what I do? It wouldn't have mattered if you'd walked in carrying a bottle of Spanish plonk. It was Spanish. Couldn't you just relax? It wasn't a fancy dress party. You could have come as yourself. Don't you realize what all those people would have seen had you just come breezing in? They would have seen someone who is funny, charming, delightful. I don't want to be charming and delightful. Funny? What's funny? I don't want to be funny. I want to talk seriously with the rest of you. I don't want to come to your house to play the court jester. You weren't being asked to play that role. I just wanted you to be yourself. Yeah, well, I don't want to be myself. What's me, eh? Eh? Some stupid woman who gives us all a laugh because she thinks she can learn. Because she thinks that one day she'll be like the rest of them, talking seriously, confidently, with knowledge, living a civilised life. Of course, actually, she can't really be like that, but bring her along because she's good for a laugh. If you think that's why you were invited, just to be laughed at, you can get out now. You were invited because I wish to have your company. Yeah, well, I'm all right with you here in this room, but when I saw those people you were with, when I couldn't come in, I'd have seized up, because I'm a freak. I, mean, I can't talk to the people I live with anymore. I can't talk to the likes of them at your house, because I'm a half cast. I decided I wasn't coming here again. I went to the pub. They were all singing, all of them. Denny, looking happy, He'd just got a few days holiday from work. Me mother, not really on top form, something was worrying her. Probably me dad, they were never really love's young dream. Oh, Sandra, in love, her fiancé, about the same, and her mates, all of them singing 
oh, some song they learned from the jukebox. And I thought, just what the frig am I trying to do? Why don't I just pack it in, stay here, and join in with the singing? And why didn't you? You think I can, don't you? You think because you pass a pub doorway and hear them all singing, you think we're all OK? That we're all surviving with the spirit intact? I did join in the singing, but when I turned around, my mother had stopped singing and she was crying. I said, why are you crying, mother? And she said, there must be better songs to sing than this. And I thought, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, isn't it? Sing a better song. Well, that's why I've come back and that's why I'm staying. So let's start work. Smile now, come on there, look. All right, here we go. Great. Now. Well. Smile. That's the last smile. of you lot off me hands. Right. Mind you, I don't know why some of you bother getting bloody married. Right, hold it now, hold it. Smile. Lovely. What's that supposed to mean? You're still not pregnant, are you? Smile. Lovely. How old are you now, Susan? Seventy-four, Dad. You're not. You're 27. Been married six years and you still haven't got a baby to show for it. Here's your sister, only two minutes married, and she's already four months pregnant. Lovely, lovely. Now, just the last one now, last one. Why don't you get on the airways and broadcast it? Great. There's nothing wrong with being pregnant before you're married. Your mother was three months gone before I married her. Smile. You know, that's just what I've always admired in you, Dad. You're overflowing with innate sensitivity and charm. Here we go. Thank you all very much. Right. <laughs> hey, Jenny. Jenny, I'm sorry for you, lad. If she was a wife of mine, I'd drown her. <laughs> I was a wife of yours, I'd drown myself. Hey, if that was your father, you insulted. Oh, sod off. Susan, you stop going to that university and you stop taking the pill or you're out. Why? You know why. I don't though, Denny. All I'm doing is getting an education. That's all. Just trying to learn. And I love it. It's not easy. I get it wrong most of the time. I'm laughed at half of the time. But I love it because it makes me feel as though I'm in the land of the living. And all you try and do is put a rope around my neck and tie me to the ground. Are you going to pack it in, Susan?
Did he say anything else to you before you left? He said it's warped me. He said I've betrayed him. And I suppose I have. Where are you staying? Um, my mother's... She said I can go there for a bit and then, uh, I'll, then I'll get a flat. I'll be all right in a minute. Just give me a minute. What was me Macbeth essay like? Oh, suck Macbeth. Why? Rita. No, come on, come on. I want you to tell me what you thought about it. Well, uh, under the circumstances... It doesn't it? matter. It doesn't. Under the circumstances, I need to go on and do this and talk about it. What was it like? I told you it was no good. Was it really useless? I don't know what to say. Yeah, well, try and think of something, Frank. Well, I don't mind if you tell me it was rubbish. I don't want pity. Was it rubbish? No, no, it wasn't rubbish. It was a totally honest, passionate account of your reaction to a play. Sentimental, you mean? No, it was too honest for that. It, it was almost um, moving. But in terms of what you're asking me to teach you, in, in terms of passing examinations, God, you see, I, I, I... Say it! Go on. Say it. In those terms, it's worthless. It shouldn't be, but it is. But in its own terms, it's... It's wonderful. It's worthless, you said. And if it's worthless, you have got to tell me, because I want to write essays like those on there. I want to learn and pass exams like they do. Yes, but if you're going to write that sort of stuff... You're going to have to change. All right. But just tell me how to do it. Yes, but I don't know if I want to tell you. I don't know that I want to teach you. What you have already is too valuable. Valuable? What's valuable? The only thing I value is here. Coming here once a week. But, but, but don't you see? If you're going to write that sort of stuff, pass examinations, you're going to have to suppress... Perhaps even abandon altogether your uniqueness. I'm going to have to change you. But don't you realise I want to change? Is this your way of telling me that I can't do it? That I'm not good enough? No, of course you're good enough. It's not that at all. Because if that's what you're trying to tell me, I'll go now. No, no. Rita, I promise you, you are good enough. You see, it's difficult for you with someone like me. But you've just got to keep telling me and then I'll start to take it in. With me, you've got to be dead firm. You won't hurt me feelings. If I do something that's crap, I don't want pity. I want you to tell me that's crap. Here. It's crap. So we dump it on the fire and we start again. You have to. Oh, Frank, I wish you were going to be there. You understand me? And the tutors at summer school will understand you, for God's sake. What if they realise how thick I am? They won't, because you're not. Rita, my dear, you can do it now. Just write the kind of essay you've begun to write for me, and you'll have nothing to worry about. I still wish you were going to be there. So do I, Rita. Right. I've got your address in France, so uh, I'll write to you every day. So have a good holiday. And don't drink too much, will you? And no all-night parties on the campus and the like. Well, I should be so lucky. No, I mean it. Oh, do you? Yes. All right, I promise. I'll go to bed at 10 o'clock every night with a cup of cocoa and Howard's end. That's if Howard shows up. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Frank. Frank, it's a pity I never wrote my diary. Why do you always have something sensational to read on the train? <laughs> Oscar Wilde. Dear Frank, today was my first real day here. And you know what? I actually rode a bike. How are things in France? I haven't heard from you yet. 
At first it was like I thought it would be. I didn't know anyone and I was going to go home. But Frank, listen, you would have been dead proud of me. I was standing in the library, you know, looking at the books, pretending I was dead clever. Anyway, this tutor came up to me and he said... Are you fond of Ferlinghetti? Frank, it was right on the tip of me tongue to say, only when it's served with parmesan cheese. But Frank, I didn't. I held it back and I heard myself saying, Um, actually, I'm not too familiar with the American poets. <laughs> well, if you like Berlinghetti, I'm sure... Frank, he started me. telling me all about the American poets and he wasn't even one of the official tutors. There must have been hundreds of us in this lecture hall. But when the professor finished his lecture and asked if anyone had any questions, I stood up. Honest to God, I stood up. Yes? And everyone's looking at me. I don't know what possessed me. I was going to sit down again, but hundreds of people had seen me stand up. So I did it. I asked them a question. Um, I was... I I was wondering if you think that Chekhov was showing us the aristocracy as, like, a decaying class. This view of a Chekhovian aristocracy in decay, it is, I presume, one you've picked up from Dr. Palmer's book on Chekhov? No, no, I mean, excuse me, but no. I beg your pardon? No, I didn't get it from that book. I haven't read it. Uh, look, you see, the way I see Chekhov... Frank, you couldn't keep me down after that. I've been asking questions all week. Mostly about Chekhov, because, as you know, I'm dead familiar with Chekhov now. Hello, Bursa. How are you? A new term beckons. Dr. Bryant, you're back before term begins. Preparations, Bursa. Preparations. Well, I can't stand here idling. There's work to be done. <laughs> Rita! My God, what is this vision I see before me? Do you like it? I've got a whole new wardrobe. Do you like it? Do you? Yes, yes, it's very nice. Did you actually manage to get any work done? Work? We never stopped. Lashing us with it, he were. <laughs> Another essay, lash. Do it again, smack. Another lecture, lash. It was fantastic. Frank, I could have stayed forever. Oh, Frank, I've got so much to tell you. Well, we've got plenty of time. I'm free for the rest of the day. Oh, great. I bought you some cigarettes in the duty-free. Frank, I've packed up. Congratulations. I've got a present for you. Oh, what is it? It's not much, but I thought, you know. Oh. Look, see what's written on it? It's engraved must only be used for poetry by strictest order, Rita. I thought it would be a gentle hint. Gentle? <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to be doing this term, Frank? Let's do a dead good poet, one of the greats. A dead good poet? Mm. I've got just the man for you. Who? They overcomplicate him, Rita. They overcomplicate him. You won't overcomplicate him. You'll love him. I was going to introduce him to you before, but I was saving him for you. Ooh! Read this. Oh, Rose, thou art sick. The invisible worm that flies in the night in the howling storm has found out to thy bed of crimson joy. And his dark secret love does thy life Destroy. You know it? Yeah, we did it in summer school. You did Blake at summer school? Yeah. You weren't supposed to do Blake at summer school. No, I know, but we had this lecturer and he was a real Blake freak. So you've uh, you've done uh, uh, Blake? Yeah. Have you covered songs of innocence and experience? Oh, of course. Well, you don't do Blake without doing innocence and experience, do you? Thanks, Frank. You sure you 
you don't want me to come in with you? You never know who you're going to meet in there. Frank, if I end up as a white slave, I'll send you the postcard. Go on! I'll see you at the tutorial. the advert, you know, for sharing the flat. <sighs> Wouldn't you just die without Marla? Oh, what am I doing? Come in, come in. Thank you. Uh, you're just through there. We're up the stairs, sort of mess and eve level. I'm a hairdresser. Oh dear, not by choice. Oh, I suppose so. What do you do? Oh, trying a bit of this, a bit of that. I'm running a bistro for a friend at the moment. Fascinating people, you love it. What did you say your name was? Well, up there. Oh, Marla! Wouldn't you just die without him? Hello, Frank. Hello, Rita. You're late. I know, I know. I'm terribly sorry, Frank. But, Frank, wouldn't you simply die without Marla? Well, frankly, no. Uh, why are you talking like that? I have merely decided to talk properly. You see, as Trish says, there's not a lot of point in discussing beautiful literature with her ugly voice. But you haven't got an ugly voice. At least you didn't have why don't you just be yourself, Rita? I am being myself. Who the hell is Trish, anyway? Trish? Me new flatmate? Oh, is she a good flatmate? Frank, she's fantastic. She's dead classy, you know? She's got taste, you know, like you have. Everything in the flat is dead unpretentious. You know, just books and plants everywhere. I'm having the time of my life. I am, you know? I feel young. Rita, 27 is hardly old. Yes, yeah, I know, but I mean... I feel young. You know, I can be young, like them down there. I want you to do an essay for me on Blake. Now, I know you're an expert on Blake now, but I haven't had the benefit of your wisdom on the subject. Are you still on that stuff? Did I ever say I wasn't? Oh, no, but... But what? Why do you do it when you've got so much going for you? It is because I have so much going for me that I do it. Life is such a rich and frantic world that I need the drink to help me step delicately through it. I'll kill you, Frank. Rita, I thought you weren't interested in reforming me. I'm not. It's just... Just what? Well, I thought you might have started reforming yourself. Under your influence. But Rita, if I take the oath, if I repent and reform. What will I do when your influence is no longer here? No, your going is as inevitable as... Macbeth. As tragedy, yes. But it will not be a tragedy, because I shall be glad to see you go. Oh, thank you very much. Will you really? Be glad to see you go? Of course. I wouldn't want you to stay in a room like this for the rest of your life. You can be a real misery sometimes, can't you? I was dead happy when I came in here. Now I feel like I'm having a bad night in the morgue.
He's eaten it. He hasn't. Darling, would you be allowed to take the order on table 14? Yeah, OK. That horrible man keeps coming in here to chat me up. Where are the real men these days? Why don't we get the likes of Shelley and Byron and Coleridge in here? I think they smell a bit. <laughs> Oh, you are in love. Did you see the productionist in Germany at the Alexander Theatre? Can I take you to order? Oh. Uh, I'll begin with the uh, pâté mackerel. Oh, yeah, that's very good, yeah. Written in 1926. Yeah. It really was beautiful. Yeah. What? No, it was so Excuse me. No, I know that Shaw wrote St. Joan in 1926. He didn't, Tiger. Shaw wrote it in 1936. Actually, Shaw wrote St. Joan in 1923, but the first production was in 1924 at the New Theatre in London. More wine, anyone? Hi, Susan. Hiya. Hi, Susan. Susan! What? We want you to settle an argument. What about? It's about Lawrence's early words. This one around. Frank. I'm sorry I'm late. I got talking to some of the students down on the grass. I never realised the time. Well, well, well. You talking to students, Rita. Well, don't sound so surprised, Frank. I can talk, you know. You used to be so wary of them. Yeah, I know. God knows why. For students, they don't half come out with some rubbish. <laughs> You're telling me. Yeah, but do you know what one of them actually said? He said that as a novel, he preferred Lady Chattery to Sons and Lovers. Right. So I thought, right, either I can ignore this or I can put him straight. So I put him straight. So you finished him off, did you, Rita? Oh, Frank, he was asking for it. He was an idiot. His argument just crumbled. It wasn't just me, anyway. Everyone agreed with me. Tiger was with them. Do you know Tiger? Yes. He's dead mad, you know. He's only known me for five minutes. He's inviting me to go abroad with them all. They're all going to the south of France for the summer holidays. Slamming it. You, you can't go. You, you, you've got exams. My exams are before the summer. Well, you, you've got to uh, wait for the results. His real name's Tyson. They call him Tiger. Is there any point in going on with this? I mean, is there any point in working towards an examination if you're going to fall in love and set off to the south of France? With who? My God, Frank, I'm just talking to some students down on the lawn. Jesus, I've heard of matchmaking, but this is ridiculous. All right, well, stop burbling on about Mr. Tyson, then. I'm not burbling on. Well, what's my essay like? It, uh, it wouldn't look out of place with these. Honest. Dead honest. Poetry, literature, what does it benefit a man if he gaineth the whole of literature and loseth his soul? <laughs> No, but seriously, folks, there is something that I have always wanted to ask you, and it is... Have you seen Pierre Gint on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> uh, assonance. Do you know, 
you know what assonance means? Eh? It means you're getting the rhyme wrong. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> terrible. Taking the name of literature in vain. It's like pissing on Wordsworth's tomb. <laughs> The difference between the tragic and tragedy is inevitability. <laughs> Come on, let's get it. No, no, no. Did you know that Macbeth was a Magnathy apple? <laughs> Not many people know that. Dr. Bryant, the Vice Chancellor of Fields, and we all agree that this sort of thing must never happen again, or the consequences could be serious. Thank you. Sod them, eh, Rita? Sod them! Will they sack you? Good God, no. That would involve making a decision. Pissed is all right. To get the sack, it would have to be rape on a grand scale. And not just with students, either. That would only amount to a slight misdemeanor. No. For dismissal, it would have to be nothing less than buggering the buzzer. Frank, even if you don't think about yourself, what about your students? What about my students? Well, it's hardly fair on them if the lecturer is so pissed he's fallen off the platform. I may have fallen off, my dear, but I went down talking. Look, I'll see you next week, eh? We've got a tutorial. You're not in any state for a tutorial, Frank. We'll talk about me Blake essay next week. I'm sorry I never made you tutorial. It's just that we're dead busy here. When you didn't arrive, I telephoned the shop. Which shop? The hairdressers, where I thought you worked. I haven't worked there for ages. Yes, yeah, so it seems. You didn't tell me. Oh, didn't I? I thought I had. What's wrong? Well, it, it just... It struck me that there, there was a time when you used to tell me everything. I thought I had told you. Do you think I could have a drink, please, seeing as I'm here? Not for free. I, I'll pay. Who cares if I've left hairdressing to work in a bistro? I care. Why? Why do you care about details like that? It's just boring, insignificant detail. Is it? Yes, I mean, that's why I couldn't stand hairdressing any longer. I don't want to talk about irrelevant rubbish anymore. What do you talk about here in your bistro? We talk about what's important, Frank. And we leave out the boring details for those who want them. Is Mr Tyson one of your customers? Look, for your information, I do find Tiger fascinating. Like, I find a lot of the people I mix with fascinating. They... they're young. And, and passionate about things that matter. They're not, they're not trapped. They're too young for that. And I like being with them. Well, perhaps, uh, perhaps you don't want to waste your time coming to my tutorials anymore. Frank, we've just been too busy here. I mean, I haven't stopped coming altogether. All right, come this evening. I can't. I'm meeting Trish soon. We've got tickets for the seagull. Oh, yes. Well, when Chekhov calls. Oh, dear. You really can't bear to spend a moment with me now, can you? Frank, that is not true. It's just that tonight I've got to go to the theatre. 
As I was saying, if you want to stop coming... Well, for Christ's sake, Frank, I don't want to stop coming. I've got to keep coming. What about my exam? Oh, I shouldn't worry about that. You'd uh, sail through it anyway. You really don't have to put in the odd appearance out of sentimentality. I'd rather you spared me that. If you could stop pouring that junk down your throat in the hope that it'll make you feel like a poet, you might be able to talk about things that matter. Instead of where I do and don't work, then it might actually be worth turning up. Are you capable of recognising what does and does not matter, Rita? I understand literary criticism, Frank, and when I'm with you, that's what we're supposed to be dealing with. Oh, oh, literary criticism, eh? Literary criticism. Well, give me an essay on that lot by next week. An assessment of a lesser-known English poet. Brian was just passing. He dropped in to make a phone call. Yes, yes, I think you know why, Morgan. We can't go on like this. Things are getting ridiculous. The advance that they offered was, as usual, inadequate. Brian. Yep. I am an academic author of some repute. Brian, and, uh, I haven't paid the bill. Uh, just hang on one second, Morgan, will you? Frank's trying to tell me something. Hmm? They disconnected us this morning. Morgan, fuck off. <laughs> Frank. Yes, oh, faithful one. Ah, oh, for God's sake. How could anyone be faithful to you, Frank? Julia has tried. She has at least tried. And what has she had in return? What have any of us had in return, Frank? Only my soul, Brian, which I must confess is very little. Frank, I'm leaving you. Brian and I are... Brian is leaving Elaine, and we're going. Congratulations, Brian. Better luck next time, eh, Julia? She said I'd find you here. She's nice to you here, isn't she? Are you sober? If you mean, am I still this side of reasonable comprehension, then yes. Good, because I want you to hear this when you're sober. This is brilliant. You have got to start writing again, Frank. It is brilliant. It's, it, it, it's witty, it's profound, full of style. Oh, tell me again and again. No, it is, Frank. It's not just me that thinks so. Me and Trish sat up and read them last night and she agrees with me. Why did you stop? Why did you stop writing when you can produce work like that? What, now, what did Trish say? Yes, it's more resonant than purely contemporary poetry. It has, like it has in it, a direct line through to the 19th century traditions of, um, of like, wit and classical illusion. Oh, that's uh, marvellous, Rita. It's fortunate that I never gave this to you earlier. Just think, if you'd have seen this when you first came here. Oh, well, I would never have understood it. No? You would have thrown it across the room and dismissed it as total shit, wouldn't you? I know. But, I mean, I could never have understood it then, because I wouldn't have been able to, you know, recognise or understand the illusions. I've done a fine job on you, haven't I? It's true, Frank. I mean, I can see it now. You know, Rita, like you, I am going to change my name. From now on, I am going to insist on being called Mary. Mary Shelley. 
Do you understand that illusion, Rita? What? Mary Shelley wrote a little Gothic number called Frankenstein. So? This clever pyrotechnical pile of self-conscious illusion is worthless, talentless shit. There is more poetry in the telephone directory and probably more insight. However, this has one advantage over the telephone directory. It is easier to rip. It is pretentious, characterless, and without style. It's not. Oh, I, I don't expect you to believe me. I mean, you recognize the hallmark of literature now, don't you? Why don't you just go away? I don't think I can bear it any longer. Oh, can't bear what, Frank? You, my dear. You. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you what you can't bear, Mr. Self-Pity and Piss Artist. What you can't bear is that I'm educated now. I've got what you have, and you don't like it. I mean, good God, I don't need you. I've got a room full of books. I know what wine to buy, what clothes to wear, what plays to see, what papers and books to read, and I can do it without you. Is that all you wanted? Have you come all this way for so very, very little? Oh, yeah. It's little to you, isn't it, Frank? Little to you who squanders every opportunity and mocks and takes it for granted. Found a culture, have you, Rita? Found a better song to sing? No. You found a different song to sing. And on your lips it is shrill and hollow and tuneless. Oh, Rita, Rita, Rita. Oh, 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 Rita! Nobody calls me Rita but you. I dropped that pretentious crap as soon as I saw her for what it was. Rita. Nobody calls me Rita. What is it now, then, eh? Emily or Charlotte or Jane or Virginia? Well, please. please. Sorry, we're full of... Oh. I'll have a drink at the bar. No, you've had enough, mate. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. Come on. I want to talk to Rita. 
Never heard of her. Rita? She works here. You must have the wrong place. There's no one called Rita works here. Now, come on. I am telling you, Rita works said, come here. Come on, out. No. Yes. No. Yes. Uh, no. Dr. Bryant, what's wrong? But he's just pissed, that's all. Mr. Tyson, where's Rita? Well, I've told you. It's there's all no... right, it's all right. Have you seen Rita? She works here. You mean Susan? Oh, yes. I suppose I do. She hasn't been in this evening. You see, I forgot to remind her that her exam is tomorrow. Well, she might be up at the Flamingo. She sometimes goes there. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Tyson. But don't you think you're a little bit... If you see her, will you tell her it's 9 a.m.? Yeah. Thank you. Don't. Come on. It's all right. Don't cry. You're still here. That's why I'm crying. It didn't work. It didn't bloody work. Trish. Look, you didn't really mean to kill yourself. You were just... Guess what, darling? Poor Susan. You think I've got everything, don't you? Trish, you have. Ah, oh, yes. When I listen to poetry, the music, then I can live. But you see, darling, the rest of the time, it's just me. And it's not enough. Do you know a girl called Rita? Forget Rita. I don't want to see you drinking. Join me for a drink. Dr. Bryant, go to bed. Right. I will. <laughs> Good night, Bertha. All right, I'd rather walk. Where were you? You missed a great party. Yeah, well, I'll see ya. I saw your tutor. What? Your exams this morning. Oh. Oh, don't forget you're coming down to France.
Susan! Hiya, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> oh, well, this is uh, Barbara. Oh. Susan. <laughs> oh, are you? OK. When's it due? I've got another three months now. <sighs> Gonna be a boy though, isn't it, eh? <laughs> I, I believe you're doing really well at the college now, eh? Well, you know. <laughs> I hardly recognise you. Really look the part. <laughs> Doesn't she, eh? Look the real student. Be on drugs and demonstrations next. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we gotta go. Going down to the hospital for their checkup. <laughs> I always go with her. Well, it's good to see you, Denny. Take care of yourself. And look after them too. Oh, he does, you know, he's very good. I oh, know. Ta-da. <laughs> See ya. At 9 a.m. precisely, I shall instruct you to turn over your examination papers, and the examination will have begun. You have three hours. You may not talk to anyone. It is now 9 o'clock. Please come in. Suggest ways in which one might deal with some of the staging difficulties in a production of Ibsen's Peer Gint. Have they sacked you? Not quite. Oh. Well, why are you packing your books up? Well, I made rather a night of it last night, so they're, uh, They're giving me a holiday. Two years in Australia. Did you bugger the bear, sir? Metaphorically. What are you gonna do? What do you think? Australia is a paradise for the likes of me. to tell you you're a good teacher. Oh. Thanks for entering me for the exam. That's all right. I know what it'd come to me to you. You didn't want me to take it, did you? I nearly didn't. I sat there for ages. I sat there just thinking while everyone else was scribbling away, thinking about what you said, about what you'd done for me. What I've done for you... Shh, shut up! I'm doing the talking. You know, Frank, that's what's wrong with you, you know. You talk too much. You think you did nothing for me. You think I just ended up with a load of quotes and empty phrases. Well, all right, I did. But that wasn't your doing. I was too hungry for it all. I didn't question anything. I wanted it all too much, so I wouldn't let it be questioned. I told you I was stupid. You're not stupid. Listen, if I say I'm stupid, then I'm stupid, OK? So don't argue. I mean... It's like Trish, you know? I thought she was so cool and together. I got home last night. She tried to top herself. Yeah, magic, isn't it? Spends half her life eating health food and whole food to make her live longer, and the other half trying to kill herself. So I was thinking about it all, you know, when I should have been doing my exam. Do you know what the first question was? Suggest ways in which one might deal with some of the staging difficulties in a production of Ibsen's Peer Gins. And you wrote Do It on the radio? No, I could have done. You'd have been dead proud of me if I'd done that and rushed back to tell you, wouldn't you? But I chose not to. I had a choice. I did the exam. 
Because of what you'd given me, I had a choice. Anyway, that's what I wanted to come back and tell you. You're a good teacher. I hear good things about Australia. Everything out there is just beginning. The thing is, why don't you come as well? It would be good for us to leave a country that's just finishing, for one that's just beginning. Good God, Frank. If you could get threepence back on all those bottles, you could buy Australia. You're being evasive. I know. Tiger's asked me to go to France with his mob. Will you go? I don't know. He's a bit of a wanker, really. But I've never been abroad. Oh, and I've been offered a job in London as well. What are you going to do? I don't know. I might go to France, I might go to London, or just stay here, carry on with my studies. I might even stay here and have a baby. I don't know. I'll make a decision. I'll choose. I don't know. Well, whatever you do, you might as well take this with you. What is it? It's a, it's a dress, really. I bought it for an educated woman friend of mine. It may not fit properly. I was rather pissed when I bought it. Oh, an educated woman? What kind of education were you given? In choosing it, I concentrated on the word woman rather than on the word educated. Thank you. All I've ever done is take from you. I've never given you anything. There is something I can really give you. Oh? Sit down. I said sit. I'm going to take ten years off you. The result arrived at the university this morning. I went to pick it up. Uh, the gate's about to be closed. Yeah, I'm just coming. Just oh, coming. Frank, we, we haven't got time. What does it say? Right. I've passed. Now, when you get on that bloody plane... Let me see. You pass with distinction. I'm proud of you, Rita. I'm proud of both of us. I'm sorry, sir, but if you don't come right away, I miss your flight. Yeah, OK.